So let's texture model table. I will not show you all of these, but I will show you the basic principle. And we start with lesson one, light matters. And if we start just by adding an HDRY, then it will not be that good. But I will give you some examples. This is no lamp, default background. You can hardly see the table at all. Then I add the default lamp and you get the boring gray table. Now I add three lamps, so you get the three point lamp without using an HDRI, and you can see the table fine, but it's not that good. You can use an HDRI without lamp, but you can get different colors like this bluish or this uh, evening color, I don't know what to call it. Or like for instance, uh, inside a garage, you get it rather white. Normally I use something called winter light and I also add a three point lamp to it and then I get this default color on only white. So that is the first. Lesson two is that topology matters. So it's about the amount of vertices that you do and in this case I get really smooth lines because I have high poly and there are three methods you can use and I will use these three methods to paint this uh, table legs right now. So I start with the vertex paint and using the vertex paint then I use vertex colors. So I start with the normal default and after that you can see right now vertex color is empty. There's nothing in the box. So what I do is that I go to object mode and then I select vertex paint. In vertex paint you can select paint and there you have dirty vertex colors. And when you select that, you can see you get smudge all over. And you can select dirt only, or if you want smudge on the complete table. And I will go with dirt only. Now I need to change my node setting so I can use my color vertex and the name col. So I go back to object mode and I put it to rendered so I can see the result right away. And first of all, I need to put it in. So an input attribute and that I put a name on and I use the capital C for color. So the name is exactly as in vertex colors. Then I need to mix that with something. So I use a, a diffuse uh, or I use a mix shader. So shift A mix shader and then I just copy uh, using shift D another color so I have two colors to work with and when I've done those two colors I need to mix them so I take the factor from the attribute and put that in and right now you can see that that is all that we need and we have it already painted very nicely. The method 2 is called point in S and it works in a similar way but we don't use vertex color here we use an input that is called, uh, we take ge geometry first, and in that we have something called pointiness. And pointiness we can have to uh, find the edges on our model. So I will show you now how to do that. So we can put in a color ramp and we use the pointiness into the factor for the color ramp and connect that to our color here. And in, in the middle between so 0 0.5 something like that we mix the two colors and when we mix them you can see the result that uh, it starts to show now you can see that the black and the white is now very separated so you can see the black in the smudge area here but you don't need to use the black you can use whatever color you want so as you can see now i change it to like uh, yellow brownish something like that and you get amount yeah something that is similar to the vertex color that we used uh, last time and the last method is used aopas uh, amb ambient occlusion and that is uh, post processing used by the compositor uh, this works best with the transparent, but first we do is select AO in the scene and we see, so we have that selected, that layer, and as I said, it works just, it works best to use this object only. So if you go down a little bit and select transparent, 
so you only get the table visible and then do a render you will not see any difference it's still white but we will do some magic tricks with this render after we have rendered it so we go to the uh, compositing nodes uh, selecting the first um, yeah button here and then we can uh, so check use nodes backdrop and auto render so we can work with our result and here you can see we get the render layers and we have an output for the composite and now we have to put in the AO uh, image here as well so uh, we put in a color mask or color mix and we connect that to uh, the uh, ambient occlusion and this is the pure ambient occlusion you can see the difference between the dark and the white so we take that one and we take the image in and now we have combined those two we now also need to have some color changes and we can put that right into the ambient occlusion if we want to and then we just change the color balance like I do now and then you can get at least yeah you can get whatever color you want to so it's just to to play around with these you can see now that I'm almost getting the similar color as the reference image just by changing the colors a little bit here but that is up to you exactly how you want to do it but that is how you use the ambient occlusion output so as soon as you do that you can do this in uh, the post processing in the compositor and then you can merge this table into another layer where you have all the other furnitures if you want to so this is also one way to do it but if you don't have a high poly object you can still do some methods to uh, paint exactly these pieces and the first one is to use two different materials in the edit mode and you just go to tab or you select edit mode where we have the table and first of all you have everything selected so then you go into your color and i can now call mine like mine table color something like that and i press assign it's always important to select the uh, biggest uh, color first so the, the complete table first and then you take the details after that so now I'm going for the details and I call it just stripes or something like that and I change the color to something else and now I select faces and then I go around the table It's so important to select the stripes when I do it. And I select view selected, then it's easy for me to move the table around when I select now all the faces that I want to paint with the stripes color. So I go around and I select all these until it's finished. And then I also need to paint the upper part here. So hold down alt and I just click and then I get all the line and then I keep down the shift and I can then deselect those areas that I don't want to be painted so and when I'm finished now everything looks okay and after that it's very important for me to select stripes and press assign and if I now go to my render view you can then see that everything is nicely selected here uh, where I now put my yeah where I put my uh, stripes that I have yellow and the rest is uh, white two different materials easy and works for every type of object and then you have of course the UV mapping that is the most common use I think to texture things uh, what you 
need to think about is that you don't need to UV map the complete object. You can select whatever thing you want, whatever you want to use UV, UV map for. So in this uh, this uh, yeah here I will show you that I use exactly the same type of uh, selection that I did with the two materials. So I just select the inner part of uh, the leg here. And then I go up and I hold down Alt and I select the line as I did before. And then I just hold down Shift and deselect those areas that I don't want to be UV unwrapped. And after that, it's very simple for me. It's just to go to shading and select unwrap and unwrap. And now I get everything on my side. And that I will use to paint in some yeah, gym or Photoshop or whatever. And when you move those, so be sure so you don't do like this. You have to do disable so you can move them. And also, as you saw me do before, select island button. And then it's just for me to move it. So it's uh, a little bit separated from each other. Like that. And then I just go to image and I go to, uh, sorry, UV and export UV layout. And here I can just save it uh, with a name. So I can call my UV lines. I did this before, just a test, export UV layout. So now I have an empty UV layout that I can use as a template when I use, for instance, GIMP. And I can open that. And now I have that to follow. Uh, when I now paint the colors here, I'm not so that I need to be inside the lines here because that doesn't matter. The, the, the only thing that matters is that everything gets painted. And I call that table inset. I'm pressing OK. And after that, I'm just starting to paint uh, all the legs that I selected as UV. And as I said before, it's not important that I'm exactly inside the lines. I can be outside. So it's just for me to select a brush that I need and then do a rough paint of it. So in this case, I just start with some yellow and I paint everything right down. And after a while, I'm finished with that one. And then I need a little bit darker inside those. So I create additional one layer that I can call table inset shadow. And I press OK for that one as well. And now when I have that on the top, I can select a brush that is a little bit smaller, a little bit darker and a little bit smoother. So after that, it's just for me again to paint uh, the leg parts here with uh, the darker paint in the middle. And you can of course do the painting exactly as you want to. But this is uh, my selection here anyway. And when you've done that, then it's just for you to uh, erase or delete the template so you don't have that in the way. So you select the uh, template and you haven't just deleted it so you just have the two layers that you painted and then you just merge them together and you save the file and in my case I just call my color lines UV lines and then export it so I already have it but you don't so I take and do an export here so now I have the paint that I can use and right now it's just for me to go in and start using that image in my nodes here. So what I do now is that I go and have just to go to my uh, input texture coordinate and 
tell them to use uh, UV, but before that I also need to have something to show. So I take my image texture, connect that to the UV, and I select the name that I had selected before, which was like uh, color lines, UV lines, this one. And with that, I can connect that to the diffuse. And if you now look at the render view, you see that that is colored. The rest is now black, so we need to change that. And all those things that is not using UV have alpha, so they are like transparent. So we can use that when we are separating the two materials here. So we take the alpha and put that into the factor for the mix shader. And we just have to change the diffuse here a bit. And then we can put the other color or material to the other mix. And suddenly, once again, we have our colored table exactly as we want to. And then I can just fix yeah, the small things left. And another way I can do it too is to use the UV map directly like this instead of using the texture component. But it's the same thing. 